This is Tabletop Deathmatch, a competition to find the next great tabletop game. It was entertaining. I don't think I would buy this game. Everything sort of flowed logically. Game designers from all over the country sent their prototypes to us at Cards Against Humanity. We picked eight finalists, and now we're bringing them to Gen Con, the biggest tabletop gaming convention in the world, where they're going to pitch their prototypes to our panel of industry-leading judges. One game will win a first printing paid for by Cards Against Humanity and be crowned the winner of Tabletop Deathmatch. My Gen Con has been amazing this year. This is my second time coming. First time was just kind of as a visitor checking it out. And this time, having my own game, <laughs> I'm getting so much more out of it. Just out of curiosity, where is everyone from? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh? Right. Omaha. Omaha. Columbus, Ohio. Exactly. No, you're from I grew up in New York, but hey. I live in California. I'm um, in Chicago. Minneapolis, Minnesota. Maryland. Uh, Seattle. Oh. All around. <laughs> I feel really good about where the game's at. Uh, I know there's a little bit more work that needs to be done, but I have a really good idea of what I need to do when I get back home. Um, and I'm really looking forward to see how uh, the rest of this contest turns out. Hey, Zach. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for coming. Can you give us the, the very quick pitch for uh, Bad Detectives? This is uh, my game, Bad Detectives, and it's a, a card-based storytelling game where everyone's trying to solve a murder, but you're not so much concerned with getting the right suspect, you're concerned with making yourself look good in front of your boss. Cool, well let me uh, introduce you to the judges who you will try to make yourself look good in front of. We have Paul Peterson, creator of Smash Up, Annalisa Delfell, the retail manager for Card Kingdom. Rodney Thompson, designer for Dungeons and Dragons. Mike Selinker, creator of the Pathfinder Adventure card game. Luke Crane, creator of Mouse Guard and Burning Wheel. And Sherry Spiro, president of Ad Magic. All right, so let's have you come over and uh, teach us how to play. That's good. So uh, before you uh, talk us through the game, I just want to take a look at the prototype. It's a really cool prototype. The cards uh, came out great. Uh, they were actually printed by Ad Magic. Um, every... So you could get the, the square card. Exactly. Card. They did the... Why was that an important design detail? Everything in this game is about lining up these cards in a grid-like pattern. What will happen is you're telling stories about these individual elements, and the stories look like lines of cards. Uh, everything connects at right angles, so it's important that you have uh, equal sides, uh, equal length sides on each card. I really like that the designer has uh, given a lot of thought to the aesthetic for this game, and the way it lays out on the table, and the way the pieces look. They're just beautiful, and they're very appropriate. Here's a victim, a conspiracy theorist, found dead. We are trying to provide some reasonable approximation of justice for this guy. What do I do on my turn? First thing you do is you draw two cards from any face down pile, or you can draw from the discard pile. Oh. And then once you have a hand of six cards, you're going to put one back. Uh, so if, on I, if I look at that and I see that there's something that matches one of my symbols, I might want it. Correct. Okay, so sure, I'll take that. So now you go to the next part, uh, building a line. And you can either play the uh, as many cards as you want from your hand in a straight line, as long as all of the icons in the top are shared across all those cards. If I do this, right, how do I tell this story? In this case, you've got a story about the victim, the conspiracy theorist, yep. and you've got two possible links. Um, the only, th this is perfectly right, everything shares the person type. The only problem is that oh. you have to build in a single direction, going outward from oh, okay. this guy. So uh, let's try this then. Exactly. I think some of the rules about how tiles are placed and how they break away from the placements need some work. The crazy Vito was talking to uh, the reporter from the Village Voice <laughs> and was later seen on his hands and knees digging for, and now I define this, this weapon, so... Well, this is an anchor point that someone else could come in and connect a weapon. So I don't I don't want to define it for them. We don't know what that weapon is. Got yet. it, okay. I didn't like that there were so many rules to begin playing the game, and I think that those can really be condensed. Uh, what's the typical play time for a complete game? A complete game, after everyone's learned, um, I would expect cases to take about 20 minutes or so per case. The teaching round definitely takes a lot longer. This isn't um, something that's been demoing really quickly, um, and that's something I'm working on. I don't think you can maybe give this game 
in its entire rule state to a new player, you might have to have a stripped down version that people could play out of the gate that doesn't have as much to it, because I really don't think it's easy to teach a new player how to play from the rules. Okay, so the victim was seen on, the, uh, on their hands and knees digging for something. The person in question uh, also knows a guy who can get you a gun, no questions asked, uh, and we have found the gun. So you've established the You've established the, the weapon for us. So now I score me, right? You do. Right, so I've connected, uh, so two points for any element card played from our hand, so. So score that, and then I score a bonus point for having this, right? Okay. So put that in. I think that's it, right? Okay, the last thing you do is examine the case. And then uh, I would get a relevance marker. You got it. So you put one piece of the puzzle together. So yes. you said something earlier about that if that we're worried about the closest one. So if somehow a weapon appeared here, mm. this would just hop over there? So here's what we haven't gotten to yet. And this is the real tricky part of the game. Because as you see, second player has already put together one piece of the case, right? You know, right now you guys are in bed together, you're working on this, um, you've got, the weapon is reliant on this chain of details from the suspect. Voodoo doll, high-end fibers on this weapon, the voodoo doll match someone's clothing. If I said that this matches the victim's clothing, then this would transfer because this is only one card away versus this right. far. Right? Yeah, yeah. I love, I love, I love that. So basically, you made a corner that said this is a connection on the on the person level, but this is a connection on the weapon level. Right. It's a much cleaner connection. It's less rambling on. It's easier to present. So let me ask: Could I do this? That is. Perfect. But now we have the relevance marker because it's closer to the victim. Correct. What's, what's the weapon? Uh, the, an empty syringe. Remember when there was this this murder case was about a revolver? I really liked the positional element to the scoring. I thought it was really kind of cool how I could put things down that would push things away and then that would change how the game scores. That's something that that pathing and scoring and positional element is something that I think really reinforced the strategic side of the game and made a nice pairing with the story side of the game. The person who solved the case, Paul, to take a moment to actually tell us what the case. This is case is going to trial, so we need uh, an executive summary. Well, of course. Well, the conspiracy theorist had a problem when they began having the phone records show that they've been talking to the instructor, and that's never a good idea. Conspiracy theorists and instructors that that that's a mix that will never work. So, you know, when they were seen bare on their hands and knees burying something, it turns out that following through that it was in fact the empty syringe and that it was near the confession booth, and that's all the evidence we really needed to, to know what happened here. Open and shut case. Open and shut case. <laughs> Any jury in the world is gonna buy it. Exactly. My favorite thing about Bad Detectives is, is, is actually the whole thing. I thought it was great playing Bad Detectives. Thematically, it was a lot of fun. I went through the rules um, because Sherry and Luke take a long time to take their turn. Not as long as you take to ask questions. That's very true. <laughs> There's a lot of lead in. I do, like, I do like some time on screen. Um, and there's some really nice uh, uh, flavor elements that we didn't get into here. Like, the start of the game is the cold open. This is about building an episode of your favorite TV show. I watch a lot of Castle, so this a lot of these tropes come from that. From the, the design concept, the genre, the theme as it's, as it's expressed in the game, to the prototype, uh, Every, all of these things are, are in service of the designer's vision. This is really important to me. It's something I'm very passionate about. When you introduced the game, you described it as a storytelling game. Uh, it is a, definitely a game in which a story is told, but I would, like, just based on playing this, I would not call this a storytelling game. I would call it a tableau building game. Uh, do you want it to be more of a storytelling game, or do you want, or, or like, is this matching what your actual vision is for the game? Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, when I call it a storytelling game, I didn't mean storytelling like Dixit. At, at every point, players would hopefully be describing what they're adding, or why the revolver doesn't work, why the syringe is a better fit. And you make up these ludicrous stories because you're bad detectives. Um, but there is a definitely a strategic point scoring uh, method. There's some you know, strategies on where you want to include your points. I, I, I see how the narrative um, is emergent from you know, the way that, that random or even in, intended elements are placed. I think calling this a storytelling game, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm 
Rodney on this, it actually does it a disservice. Okay. I think it actually muddies the waters for the game. I think it, like something like a case building game or something like that. It'll differentiate yourself. All right, well, we certainly have uh, a lot to discuss about the game. Um, can we hold on to your prototype and uh, kick you out into the hallway for a little bit so we can uh, talk about your game? All right. All right, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, everyone, you. for playing. Yeah, appreciate absolutely. it. <sighs> it went really well, I think. Um, it went a lot smoother than I expected. <laughs> uh, when the judges just understood and were able to explain some of the rules to some of the other judges, and I didn't have to do that, seeing the look of recognition on everyone's faces, like, oh, this works, and oh, this is a smart play, um, it was great. It was seeing my game come to life in the hands of other people, and that was totally worth it. All right, well, that seemed like a, a pretty um, exhaustive uh, playtest. Sherry, what did, what did you make of the game and, and uh, learning it? I really liked it, I enjoyed it. I think that he didn't have a lot of time to get his final designs in place because he's got so many cards. And I think that they were so busy trying to put all the cards together that they didn't maybe use the best use of the space on the cards. Uh, I just think there's a lot of little things that can be done to make it clearer when somebody's learning the game right off the bat. This game can be um, cleaned up, made a lot more slick, um, and just be a better game overall with uh, uh, a better visual design for the pathing that is plugged into the game system itself. So, Zach worked with an amazing illustrator and an amazing designer, and I think that the design is a little muddy. Definitely the best elements on the table are these little handmade pieces. I think Zach has really good design instincts. I think he's got a good eye. I really respect that he fought for these square cards and that he held to his principles and made a more difficult prototype to get this square card size because he felt that there was gameplay value to it. And I want to see a version of this game where there's not three people all putting their ideas into it, but it's it's Zach's design and, and it's his idea. I think it would be a lot more clear and a lot more, like you said, a lot easier to read. So it's a problem with the layout of the cards and the prototype. It's the problem with the that player card that has the tiny little type on it with a million turn steps. Like it's just, this, this game has been, I, I can tell that a ton of work has gone into it, but there needs to be more work on the part where people learn it quickly and get into it and start using it. Is this, is this game uh, affordable? I mean, it's it's got a whole lot of tile cards. It's got the various uh, pop-ups. It's got, you know, I mean... That was my question. The badge. I mean, like, what is Can this I see game? that? What is this game? This, it, it certainly doesn't need this many counters. Right. He said that he had made extra for... Right, right. Uh, for, and for and they get definitely lost. very complicated to have that many cards, and I think you could do this game with 100 cards or something like that. I'm not sure how much replayability would be lost by doing that because it's still funny about it being the confessional in the empty syringe or you know a good story about that yeah. even if next time it's the revolver in the confessional. So. I disagree. He feels really strongly that each play should be different. So that's why he has so many cards and frankly they're so small it's not going to make a difference in price. This game has almost 400 cards. They're small square cards and it has dozens of little marker pieces but even though it has a lot of components, they're not expensive. And I feel that this game can be brought in inexpensively enough to meet a good suggested retail price. But if it had all these pieces and all these cards, um, I would assume it would be in the $34 to $39 price range. Do you think we, totally can, we can manufacture for that price range? Oh, totally. I think that I've been pretty much reassured that it would be a fairly moderately priced game. I mean, they ask a lot of tough questions, yeah. but as long as you, it's not questions that I haven't heard before, yeah. um, or and they're all things that I've thought about, so knowing the answers ahead of time yeah. definitely See, that's out. what, in my play testing, there was a lot of really good answers. I'm yeah. hoping they're going to ask again, because I already know the answer for them. Yeah, so. so if you, just, if whatever they ask, you know, it's probably something you've heard before, it's probably yeah. something you've thought about. Yeah. Once you get in there, it's just, Another, it's just another demo. Yeah. Like we've yeah. done this many times. So. Yes. Yeah. so let me tell you the moment that I realized that this game was as solid as it is, and that was uh, we're playing cards and we're we're talking smack to each other and we're joking around. Like there was a moment there where we kind of all fell into like yeah. this is just a game we're playing. We're just we're not evaluating yeah. this game yeah, for absolutely. a contest. Uh, when I design board games, that's the moment that I know that this game is working. Is we're talking smack, right? We're we're arguing. We're we're actually competing. I think with a UX overhaul, this game is in really great shape, and I I totally love it. I think that it is very very close to being an excellent game. Uh, right now, it's good, but I, I think it's really close to being. Excellent. Maybe you guys have seen it before. I have never seen this before. A reset button on the final turn 
where everybody else gets to take a turn or steal the reset button. I thought that was brilliant. Not exactly like that. There's definitely games that, that I win, oh, you screwed it up, now we're back in the game. I mean, I, I found that the, you know, we were having fun, la, 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 and then all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, this next thing I do could either be the last thing I do in this game or I can take control of the game. When I read the rule about stealing the end game, uh, I, I initially thought that would make the game go on forever, but it really didn't. I, I really felt like it was kind of an opportunity to swoop in, and if you could pull it off, great. But it never felt like it uh, set up a situation when you couldn't predict that the game was gonna end. I'm actually concerned about the demo ability of the game um, because there's a lot of things to explain and to be able to pull it out or some of it out and be able to comprehensively like go over it with some customers in like 10 minutes would be optimal and I worry that that's not going to be effective. I think that's an excellent criticism. I think that you should level that analysis at every game that comes out. The rules of the game, especially on how you make a line in that game, are very hard to remember and they might be too complicated. Hearing you say that, I can think of a way to demo this game in 10 minutes. So can I, but uh, he, he needs to address that, yeah, exactly. and, and that needs to be addressed well, exactly. as part of the, the presentation of the game, because it is weird and fiddly, and like, it's, not your, it's not a typical Euro game. The term Euro game originated with European game designers. Euro games tend to be complicated games that have a lot of components, and they focus on the minutia of play. Usually involving abstract mechanics, bidding, worker placement, or other similar mechanics. And it often means a kind of non-confrontational economic game. I asked the I mean, I feel like I asked the question three times, and what I got was a user interface discussion, but what I was really trying to say was, you might have too many rules here, let's take a look at what the rules are doing, so, and he didn't want to have that discussion. And that, that it's kind hard to of, have that discussion under lights. No, no, I, and, and between us, like when we say, hey, we think there's a problem with your game, it's very difficult for him to say, oh, um, yeah, well, don't, we're not, I'm not gonna time. do that. I think there's obviously a lot of issues with telling the players which cards can be placed where and then creating the lines. I also thought that something we didn't talk about during our breakdown of it was, I thought that the card drawing and discarding like there's some uh, order of operations issues there that I really like to see cleaned up because it felt a real a little unintuitive to be drawing at the beginning of my turn and then discarding and then trying to figure out what I needed in my hand before I even play. I think that all needs to be cleaned up and put at the end of the turn and I think that would make it a much better game. I think Annalise's point needs to be looked at though. It is very possible that this is a really good game once you understand it and a really rough game if you don't. That 10 minute demo might need to strip some concepts out, like maybe there's an advanced mode that says, okay, now here's why this game playing on advanced mode is harder, but in the original game, it's like you're playing Corkle. It's just by the Corkle rules. Yeah, I would love to see it scope, like you play with 50 cards, play with 100 cards, you know, and then like add in this rule, and stuff like that. Those are not problems at the heart of the game, but they sort of suggest that maybe the, the way the rule book's written and the way the line management works and stuff like that need an analysis, not on the final level, not in the game that we will play when we're playing our 10th game of it, but your first, this first game needs to be looked at. These are easy problems to solve. I mean, this is a level where you want to be when you're evaluating a game. If I was a publisher and Zach came to me and said, I would like you to publish this game, I would talk to him about what the name of the game was, what the, the art style was, what the end game condition was, a couple of things, but I would not talk to him about the core mechanics of the game or any big problems with the game. That is a great place to start. Right, well, let's, let's get Zach uh, back in here and let him know what we thought. Zach, thanks so much for showing us the game. Thanks for playing. I like that you have almost 400 cards for replayability so that each round is slightly different. We really liked a lot of the mechanics of the game, including your end of game condition where somebody could start a round of everybody has one turn to play and then steal that opportunity to do it again. That was really nice. There needs to be a way to demo this in a shorter amount of time. I feel like there needs to be a simpler way to explain the game. Additionally, we all felt like the individual components of the graphic design were really strong, but overall it was a bit of a mess and there were some usability issues in the card layout. And overall, we liked the work that you did the best. We liked your little handmade components and thought that was a really fresh, clean aesthetic for the game and it fit the theme. And we also really respected that you held out for those square cards and I agree with you that that adds to the mechanics of the game. We'll see you at final judging. All right, looking forward to it. Thanks.
what they were saying about having being able to demo the game in a short amount of time, that's a problem that I've actually been running into at Gen Con, is that the explanation of the game takes longer than it does to play a single round. I think that the amount of work needed to bring the game up to their expectations isn't going to be that bad, and this game will be ready for next year in one way or another.